Let's imagine that we're looking at a landscape like this of some mountains and you can see that there's a line that goes right through the middle, which is the horizon line. But let's say that the top half was our left channel and the bottom half was our right channel. You could look at this as kind of a visualization of our stereo image. Let's say we took away the bottom half though and we replaced it with an exact copy of the top half. So now since it's the exact same in the left channel as it is in the right channel, you could look at this as a mono signal. It has to be the exact same in both, otherwise it's gonna have some stereo elements. Now let's also flip the polarity of our right channel so that it's out of phase with our left channel here. So if we take this and we line it back up as if we were listening at the exact same time with our left channel and we reduce the opacity a little bit here to simulate things happening at the same time, everything turns gray, meaning that everything is canceling out. So you could look at this gray block as silence. So that's essentially what we're doing when we're flipping the phase of one channel in relation to another. So this time let's take our reflection and let's flip it in the exact same orientation that we had both of the copies in as before. So now you can see it's similar to our mono setup, but we do have some differences because this is the reflection of the water. So now let's say we applied the same process where we invert the phase of this channel, our right channel, and we line it back up with our original top and we reduce the opacity in the same way. You can see that it doesn't turn fully gray. There's obviously some differences between the reflection on the water and the actual mountain. So what we're looking at here is essentially the side signal. Right? This is just the differences between the left and the right channels, or in this case, the reflection of the mountains and the mountains themselves. So now that we have this set up, we can actually apply some effects to the, the difference in this case, or the, the side signal, right? So I'll represent that with a change in color here. And this could be like, you know, we're adding some EQ or something or some effects to just the side signal. And it's pretty advantageous in, in certain scenarios. So let's hop back into our DAW and check out what's happening in terms of audio. In order for something to be perceived in the center, it has to be identical in both the left and the right channels, just like we saw with the photograph example. But what we can try to do is isolate the mid or the center signal, everything that's the same between the left and the right channels. Uh, and we can do that by adding the left channel and the right channel together, okay? So let's take a look at that. All right, so say we have a, a normal song in stereo like this. In order to demonstrate adding the left and right channels together, what we, what we wanna do is pull open a utility, and you can use M utility if you like, but I'm gonna use uh, Ableton's utility here. Now, what we wanna do is set this particular file to just be listening to the left portion of the audio, just like this. So now, if I duplicate this, and on our duplicate, I select right instead of left, we've got one track listening to the left, and we've got the other track listening to the right, and I'll actually rename this so it's more clear. So take a listen to what happens when we play it now. Essentially all of the width disappeared and it actually got a little bit louder as well. So now let's say that we create a new version of the track. So I'll call this one original, okay? And we will get rid of our utility here. Now what I wanna do is let's take a listen to when we go to, we right click this uh, width knob and we go to mid side mode and we select 100% mid. Let's see what happens when we, uh, when we hear this, basically utilities version of what we just did. So it's done the exact same thing that we did, but it also compensated for the level difference when we added the two together. So it saves you a little bit of work that way. Now, in order for something to appear in the sides of, of a mix, of any mix, there has to be some difference between the left channel and the right channel. I think the easiest example of this is actually panning, where one side is just a little bit louder or a lot louder than the other side. So it appears to us that it's coming from one direction or another. So what we can try to do is isolate the, the side signal by basically subtracting the left channel from the right channel, the exact opposite thing that we just did. 
And the way that you subtract an audio is you flip the phase of one channel in relation to another. So let's do that. All right, so I've got just a normal copy of our original audio here on a new track, and I'm gonna drag utility and do a very similar thing that we, that we just did, where I'm gonna have one track listen to just the left portion of the audio, and then we'll duplicate this, and this one will listen to just the right. But this time, though, we're going to flip the phase of the right channel here. Okay, so watch what happens now when I combine these two together and, and play them at the exact same time. So you can hear that everything from the center has now disappeared because all of the things that were the same are now out of phase because we put them out of phase when we flipped the polarity. And it's doing the same thing that we did with the photograph where we inverted the colors and then we lined it back up. And there were some differences between the reflection on the water and the actual mountain. So if we take our original track and instead of listening to the 100% mid signal, we're going to listen to the 100% side signal. you can hear that it is actually a stereo signal. But if we listen to ours, it's actually a mono version of the side signal. So we need to do a little bit more routing in order to reorient it back into a left-right version of the side signal in order for us to properly be able to manipulate things and uh, basically decode it back to the way that it was originally. Now. This part is a little bit more advanced, but I think it's a really cool concept to see in action, to see what's actually going on behind the scenes in terms of audio. So stick with me, stick with me. So we know we need to reorient it back into left and right so we can actually hear some stereo width on our side signal. The way that we do that in terms of decoding is we add the left channel to the mid signal that we previously already made the very first step, and we take the right channel and we subtract it from the mid signal, okay? So let me show you how to set that up. The way I'm gonna do it is with return tracks today, okay? So let's make a few return tracks. The first return we need to dedicate to a phase flip, okay? Which I will describe the function of in just a second. The next return is gonna be dedicated to our new left channel, and the third one's gonna be our new right channel. Now I mentioned that we need to combine the left portion of the side signal with the, the mid signal. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to uh, send our side signal to new left. Okay. And I'm also going to do the exact same thing with our mid signal. Okay. So those two are combining. Now for the right portion of the side signal, we need to combine that with the mid signal, but we need to subtract it and not add it. Now remember, in order to subtract an audio, we need to flip the phase of one channel in relation to another. So that's what our very first return called phase flip is, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send the side signal to phase flip, okay? So that's going to return A, and we've got it routed to our new right, okay? So it's sending from our side signal to getting the phase flipped, and then it's going to new right after that, okay? We're also going to send our mid signal straight to new right, and bypass that phase flip, okay? So now if we take a listen to the side signal, we brought back that stereo element so that it sounds the exact same as our original track with a uh, utility and the 100% side, right? So the real magic here now is when we play both of these at the same time, it returns back to the way that it was originally, but now we have these both split up so we can actually process them differently. One cool thing too is that if we wanted to check to see if it is indeed the exact same, what we need to do is go to our original track, play it at the same time, and flip the phase to check to see if there's silence. If there is silence, you know that it's the exact same thing, okay? So we're gonna go to our original track here, and we'll open up Utility and make sure that the phase is flipped on the original track. So now let's do the test here, right? And as a quick example too, like if you wanted to uh, say, turn up the side signal.
Maybe we could EQ it a little bit here too. So essentially this is exactly what's happening when you're using a mid-side plugin behind the scenes. And even though we did all this by hand, I think it's really cool to see the inner workings of what's happening inside your DAW when you're doing this. And you can apply processing separately from the mid and the side signal, which we will get into in the next video. So if you guys have any questions about this entire process, please let me know. I know it's a little bit more complex, but I think it's really, really interesting to see kind of the inner workings of something as magical as this. So as always, happy music making, and we'll see you in the very next video. Take care. Peace.